It may have not been clear how I create the line work for the plans, um, so I'm going to show you the old school way, which I still think works very well. It's using all native SketchUp techniques, um, and that was creating a group from Slice. Uh, this can be done with many other plugins like Scalp, um, TIG's section, section cut face, there are many options. So what I'm showing you right now, this is a very simple, again, it's that schematic model we were looking at. And I have line work already created for the basement and the first floor, and I'll show you how I do it for the second floor. The sections that were in the template originally are still there with the added section I mentioned for the basement. Um, and it's a very simple process. You simply highlight that section and you select create group from slice. And it immediately makes a group that is a slice right through the building. So first thing I do is I put that on the appropriate layer, layer which is SP line work. Um, since I'm using my template, which is really nice, is after I take that group that I just made, and I should have done this while I highlighted it because now it's gonna be a little difficult to isolate but you can with a little maneuvering, is to cut and paste that into the appropriate level layer. So I'm going to edit, cut that line work out. I'm going to edit, enter the group, which is the um, second floor level, and then I'll just paste it in place. Now it's nice because I know that that is within the correct group. The other nice aspect is because you're using the template where all of the line work is set to show. I just click on the second floor line work. And now I'm looking only at the second floor line work. This was in a schematic phase, so the line work was done kind of fuzzy. Very painful to try and edit this, so I do change the style for editing. Um, typically I'll have a clean style, like the working model style that I can edit it. Uh, you'll see it's highlight. When I highlight it, it is actually selecting the group that it's within. So you need to enter once. And now you can see you're hitting the group, which is the SP line work. The very first step that I make is I color it. I know coloring groups or components can sometimes lead to problems, but this is actually one case where it makes a lot of sense, and you'll see shortly why. So I'm going to pick color 003. You can pick any color you like. I'm picking a, a gray. So now I've colored that group. You can see it shows up here in the entity info box that it's colored gray. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to enter that group. And you can see it's composed of different components. I don't want those to be components because I want it to be all one element. So I will go through a series of exploding until I can't explode anymore. I think I'm already there. Yes. So now I'm going to go in and edit. And what I want is for these to be solids, solid faces, which they aren't right now. And this is why it's really nice to have set the color to the group, because as soon as I start to add, I know when it's filled. And you don't worry about all that center part getting filled. And sometimes you come up with techniques to quickly fill different sides, but if you, you know, line like this, as long as you're covering across several of the elements, they will all get filled in eventually. These are the typical steps that I do on every project. You'll see it actually does go fairly fast. This is an outlooker. I'm going to color it anyways, but I probably will end up adjusting the section so that outlooker isn't cut through the center. That's a beam that protrudes out to carry the rafters on the roof and it actually gets carried back in twice the span on the interior. In case you're interested what that was. So then here I'm just going to continue to move through. You might find when you delete the interior color that there are some areas of white that still show up, I can usually tell that because I do not get the pen to complete itself. And then you come back in and edit those. Uh, in reality, you probably don't have to worry so much about the door frames like I'm doing. 
because uh, the key is to really see what that stud frame is. Uh, but to me, graphically, it just looks a little better. Now I've got, this is actually where the roof is cut through. I do like to tone those as well. You can clean up all the corners if you like, you know, things like this, if you want things to just be solid. I'm going to go in here and erase all of that. You can see that I was correct. There are some areas that did not get the color, namely the door components. And so you can come back in, you know, feeling, in this case, that means the components did not color or did not get exploded. Sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can also edit by component. You know, the, the one aspect that can be difficult is if you have big changes, a lot of times I will actually just go through the whole process from the start and redo all the line work. If there are minor changes, they're actually really easy to edit because you, um, I will show you an example in a second of how you do that. It's very simple to go into, as for right now, I've selected that second floor line work layer to edit because it isolated the line work nicely for me. If I still needed to isolate it because there was something different, I just click the working model. It's still highlighted. And as an example, if I decided to move this window, I can edit it right in here. Um, if this window had projected over a foot, I just left select that line, move it a foot. It becomes very easy to edit small changes. If it's a massive change and there's so much that you have to do, I would just start from scratch on a new line work. But again, you can see it really doesn't take all that long. And so closing out of this, I'll go back to my second floor line work scene, which saved the old sketchy look to it. And I've got all my line work done for that particular floor. And that's done same process for each floor. And again, the beauty of having all of the templates set up is it works well for editing specific items. Because sometimes, as you saw me do earlier, it's hard to actually select that line work layer. Even when I'm in that group, it wants to select several. So the shortcut to doing that is to go right into the second floor line work, edit group. Now I'm going to edit this line work group itself. I'm right in there. Now I can be in the working model and I've got it selected. I don't have to worry about trying to pick it out. Now, like I said, you can do this same process if you're using a plugin. It really makes no difference. If you're using Scalp, you just use their section tool. It'll generate that. It, it does create automatic layers which I would typically adjust to my layer system. That way my templates still work. Uh, that's mainly one of the reasons I like to use primarily the native tools of SketchUp and Layout is I feel I have much more control over it the way I want to use them as opposed to how a particular plugin might want me to use it. It's not that the plugins are bad, I just, I have found this system to work really well for me to maintain managing multiple projects over a given time. Um, I try to run around five to six, um, averaging 4,000 square feet homes per year. Uh, this is a smaller one at about three, so I can usually bump that up to seven, maybe eight projects. I have run as many as 10 in a given year, um, which was a great year. It was wonderful. It really pushed me to the limit, but it did show me what is possible using this type of layout and SketchUp system and how to keep things simple. And if you have consistency and control, to me that's a lot more powerful than potentially having a plug-in do things for you.